All right, folks, welcome to Nino's Corner.tv. This is actually the Fluff Tube edition. I got Natasha Owens, Christian country artist. And I didn't know this, but she just told me she dethroned Taylor Swift on uh, iTunes, which is incredible. You're number one. You were number one. Are you still number one on iTunes? No, no, that just lasted for a short amount of time last March. Oh, but that must have been so sweet, so nice. It was. <laughs> Especially the Great knock satisfaction. Out, uh... <laughs> So that's great. Um, and number two on the Billboard Country Digital song sales, right? Yeah, in pop, it hit both. Come on. We only wow. we only distributed it as pop because the sound that we didn't expect it to hit the country charts too. That's incredible. So we're seeing this whole shift, this whole paradigm shift in the music industry, especially with this genre with country Christian music. People are sick and tired of the old, I guess you could say the old industry. You know, yeah. the, the old Hollywood, old music industry, people are, are letting their voices be heard. Literally, independent artists like yourself are making a big bang. First, folks, get your noble gold. Get a global financial storms might be raging, but thousands of investors in precious metals with noble gold are smiling. They know that whatever happens, their investments will be safe from the turmoil. Protect your savings from market volatility with a noble gold investments IRA and claim your free silver virtue coin. Talk to a Noble Gold investment, uh, in, in, uh, Investments Expert today, and they'll talk you through your options. And if you qualify, they'll guide you through the whole process. Call 877-646-5347 today and get started uh, controlling your financial future. Folks, hit the link below and get started. All right, Natasha, this is uh, this is going to be nice. I, I'm going to go ahead and play your video so everyone can see it. Uh, I'm not playing one uh, song, but I'm going to play the Rhino one. This is the newest one, correct? Yeah, correct. All right, let's get started. Check this out, folks. This is the uh, how long has this song been out, by the way, Natasha? Uh, it came out two weeks ago. All right. <laughs>
I see videos like this or when I see musical artists like yourself, it reminds me of like Tom McDonald, uh, Jason Aldean, uh, Levy, the whole thing. I mean, many of you guys are now transcending into this genre or into it. You're creating your own way. You're, you're, you're making your own moves in the, in the industry, which is never before seen, especially now with YouTube. What made you start this? How did you, you just, you got fed up with everything? Because you struck a chord with the American people, obviously. So how'd you get started? What made you want to do this? You know, I've been in the contemporary Christian genre for almost 11 years. And uh, in 2018, uh, in Virginia and New York, I had never seen that type of evil. And so that was the beginning of me turning towards politics. Uh, I was on faith initiative team his last three years in office. So I'd never crossed politics until then. And then it. Uh, we wrote a song called Stand in 2018 to motivate the church to stand up on the pro-life issue. And I just saw, I mean, the unpatrioticness, the horrible things that people say about our country, who live in our country, who take our freedom for granted. And our freedoms were taken away during, I did a patriotic album to give back to the veterans and just remind people that our freedom is not free, Right. And I got a lot of flack in Contemporary Christian for uh, doing a patriotic album, which shocked me, right? You would think that Nashville would be the hub of conservative Christian values. And it's not. We're seeing it pulling away a little bit in country, but it's worse in Contemporary Christian. The churches in Nashville, very progressive, uh, very liberal, and uh, conservative values don't line up with them anymore. And so uh, I did a pro-life song on that patriotic album called Stand for Life. That is what I say got me kicked out of Christian because um, there were boycotts. It got you kicked, got you kicked well, out? Well, I say kicked out of Christian. I got boycotted from the radio stations for promoters. Uh, I was getting kicked off of events because I was too pro-life. I could offend someone. And that so the Christian stations weren't playing you? Absolutely. And it was the Christian uh, so it's radio all, it's stations. So it's all compromised now. It's all compromised. They're too afraid. They're too silent. And this is not, we are living in a time that it's not left and right. It is up and down. The battle is between good and evil. And they think they can sit on the on the fence and not take a side and not be persecuted and, and, and just love everybody. And that is not what Jesus is about. That's not what the Bible is about. To speaking truth is love, right? And so my husband, who's the more radical one, he, he, he said from 2020, we need to do a song. We need to illuminate the fact that we have a broken system and it needs to be acknowledged, talked about, and fixed. And he just kept saying, Tosh, you got to give a voice back to the people because um, they're being censored on Facebook. We're not allowed to talk about this topic. We need to do something that shows proof, at least. And I, I just kept putting them off because I knew that Nashville is very anti trump and that I would never have. I love being out on this patriotic road, but I wanted to go back to ministry, right? That's where my heart is because I'm a survivor of depression and I wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for God. And I'm in the trenches helping people. Um, so I kept putting him off. Well, when the industry bowed up and reared up against me on the pro-life topic, I said, okay, Dave, now is the time to do it on. Let's just put, put a stick of dynamite in Nashville. I don't care if I'm associated with a genre that doesn't stand up for, for babies. I don't want to be a part of it. So um, we did the one song and we knew we would have tech suppression, which we did had no idea that it was going to go, number one, uh, we had over 100 million views that we were able to capture. So you just put it up on YouTube? You just did the song and then just put it out there? Is that what you did? Pretty much, because my PR guy had did a press release. The Wire rejected it. They, they rejected going to the press desk. Um, and so... It, it's like they did everything. YouTube, every time that would get up close to a million, you would be watching the video and it would erase back down to like 200. So yeah, I've, um, I've experienced that with my videos. Yeah, Facebook was taking it down, all that. But people like Steve Bannon and Mike Lindell gravitated to it immediately. And it just, it was viral. It's a song that is like an earworm. You can't unhear it. It's very catchy. And it just spread like wildfire. It went viral on TikTok. Went number one, went platinum. Um, and I would be probably, you know, up for a Grammy for what happened with the song. Unfortunately, I will never probably ever get a Grammy again because uh, I'm blacklisted, you know, but it was worth so, it. So I like to see things like this. A good friend of mine is Jim Caviezel, who did the movie Sound of Freedom. And for him to do that, he caught a lot of backlash from Hollywood. I mean, who knows if he's, you know, just playing the, the role of Jesus Christ in The Passion of the Christ. 
uh, right. was bad enough. But now he does this movie and it's like, who knows what roles he's ever going to get again. Um, as long as we have a, 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 a platform like YouTube or Rumble to put songs out on, I think you guys have a better chance. Um, but do you see a shift right now in the music industry uh, for independent artists such as yourself? Do you see it happening? I mean, I see it happening. I see this more so the music industry than the movie industry, because I see it happening for you guys very fast in the sense that, um, you know, if you have a good song, you put it out there, man, it gets, it gets a hundred thousand views, 500,000 views, a million views. And then you're on your way. Yours hit number one on iTunes. You dethroned Taylor Swift. What did that feel like for you? That had to be great. It was fantastic for the Washington Examiner to say I was hotter than Taylor Swift was just, for a small amount of time was very gratifying because I'm much older. She could be my child, you know? Um, anyway, so yeah, the, the industry has shifted. I know in contemporary Christian, I can only speak for, that's the only genre I've been a part of, but I think every genre has been affected by when Spotify and the streaming came out. In contemporary Christian, you had ministry-minded heads of all the record labels. When streaming came out, all of those were fired and secular, um, radio execs were hired because they had to figure out how to make money. I mean, and it's a difference of um, before president made progress with Congress, um, you know, Taylor Swift was the number one to boycott uh, the streaming and not put her songs on streaming because if they downloaded a million um, copies of, of her song on iTunes, it would be about a million dollars, dollar a down a download. When it goes to streaming, a million streams would be about $70. So that was the difference in money and it crippled the contemporary Christian genre of music. So with that happening now, as an artist, we can't put it on digital platforms unless we sign it, unless we check to agree that our music goes to streaming. So they're stealing our music, right? Um, and the songwriters, putting songwriters having to do second jobs and, and so forth. So that started a long time ago. The industry has been changing. Um, and when that started, it meant in contemporary Christian that they weren't going to go out and find new talent who had never been exposed to anything and develop them. That used to be what they used to do. They don't do that anymore. You have to have a following. Um, you know, that's why these big music ministers of these big mega churches get you an have opportunity. You have a big social media platform. Correct. You have to have your own following. Well, that opened up an entire path now for the independent artists to come through because the record labels watch YouTube. They watch when something goes viral. They watch, um, and that's how they, you know, you've got a following, you've got a buzz, you've got a number one, something that you've achieved, then they come back and, and suddenly they they want a part of it, right? But they're not going to put out their money in anymore to develop new talent. You have to kind of prove yourself. So it has changed everything. It gave everyone more of an equal playing field. And you need your power back. Yes, they you absolutely back. did. And something that should have really not been strip, stripped away. It was it was more of a like country club with an invite only. Now anybody's able to do it. Everybody has cool. it's the capitalistic way. Are you being approached right now by labels or anything like that? Or, or are they trying to get you to or is it oh, not even there's no labels out there that aren't woke. They're all heads from New York and LA, whatever. It's a very anti absolutely not. I've been put on blacklist, I'm sure. Uh, even I, I've gotten a lot of flack in the political world from the left, of course, but I've gotten some flack from the right as well, which I'm really shocked about. Um, but I don't care. We're blazing this path and I could be uh, the media now has deemed me the next Lee Greenwood. So I can walk his path and not even have to do a genre. But I think you're, what you're you a trendsetter said, for sure. You're a trendsetter. Yeah. You're, you're paving your own way. What I kind of. Uh, said, go ahead. I think what you said is very important that a new genre is being um, being walked with John Rich and uh, Tom McDonald and all these ones that are that are stepping up. People, it's refreshing for people to hear the truth. Are you so? How, how you have your own YouTube channel, correct? I mean, I'm surprised it's still up. I saw the song. I'm like, dang, how is she still up there? I'm like nervous to even have you on my show. To be honest, with you. Uh, it's, uh, it's, so, it's so red hot. It's so sensitive. How do you, you know, like? So I'm shocked I haven't been taken down either. Once the song got so big, so fast, then they would get massive recognition. Uh, people, 
you would be, they'd be scrutinized if they took it down or messed with it, right? Because we called their hand on so many things that they called glitches. Uh, so at some point, they just kind of left it, right? Uh, Facebook is the only one still kind of censoring it. Yeah, Facebook bombed me a long time ago. I'm not even concerned with them anymore. Yeah. Um, so, like, when you look at the music industry right now and where it's headed, and it's just out in the open, I mean, it's so demonic, right? I mean, they are the Super Bowl halftime shows, the concerts, Travis Scott, Taylor Swift. It's like they've all sold out. It's yeah. like the only way you can you can even get recognized, you got to pay to play. You got to sell your soul, or you got to do things you don't ever, you never thought you would do in your life. How does it feel for you? To strike a nerve with America, especially, I guess you could say the the MAGA, but really, really red blooded Americans. And doesn't that show you that what you're doing is right? And don't you feel good about what you're doing? Like you're really striking a nerve within America that people are flooding to your music instead of someone like Taylor Swift. Did you actually dethrone her? Yeah, I, I agree with that. And and the fact that um First of all, I can sleep at night. I live with integrity. I want to fight on truth. The contemporary Christian market, no one is standing up. And you would think that would be the genre or the set of people as Christians standing up against this evil. They're completely silenced. Um, not to act is to act. That's what Bonhoeffer said. And uh, so they choose not to act because they're too scared. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, right? So when... Um, when I decided to be more vocal and go down this path, I told my husband, I said, I don't mind being in a secular market. I can still minister and bring Jesus to a secular market. Um, however, I want to make sure that I stand on a platform of, of truth and biblical values. And I want people to see that, you know, we MAGA gets a bad rep. I mean, make America great again. What is so bad about that? The people who are conservative Christians in this country, they believe in the nuclear family they believe in god they love this country they're just good people and they're they're being we're being demonized and it's just not the truth so my my boys my grown boys 23 and 21 sat me down when i went more vocal and said before it comes out i need you to think about this are you sure you want to go down this path and i said boys i we are at a crossroads to where we're about to lose this country i will do anything i know music is just you think it's just a song. What what can it do? But music is so powerful. It's a tool and it can get through where words can't. So I said, I will go down fighting uh, for our freedom. And if I lose it all, I lose it all. At least I'm going to be able to sleep at night and I'm going to be a person of integrity. And so they said, mm -hmm. OK, we just wanted to make sure. So you're taking that chance and I, I commend you on it. I uh, I got to tell you, I really respect people like you or, or people in my genre of podcasting that are coming out trying to speak the truth. I've got, I've had to navigate YouTube, bob and weave and do all kinds of stuff just to stay <laughs> credible on here. Um, where are you? Are you holding concerts? Are you touring right now? Do you just sing in churches? Like where, what are your venues and do you have a tour coming up? So I have, my life has changed a little bit. I used to be on the, the contemporary Christian tour all the time. I'm too controversial in that market. So there's a lot of people who have voiced that they'll never go out on the road with me again. There is some that say, we love you, we're behind you, but we can't support you, you know, publicly because it would be the end of us, right? In Nashville, we live in Nashville. So I, I don't have any opportunities touring in contemporary Christian anymore. Um, I still do women's conferences, which, which I do, which those have been threatened in the past. Um, and I do a lot of political stuff. This is a this is a political year. So um, I'm I'm singing the Star Spangled Banner, you know, 2,700 times a month. I feel. Um, so you're telling and, me more people more people ran from you now that you've had these hit songs. Absolutely. Well, it was really the one because I think that was associated with insurrection because you're questioning, and so you know Republicans, um, even even in the conservative, the big leaders in the conservative movement. Um, I had opportunities with some big organizations that dropped it suddenly because they thought needed to get away from them and just move on. Well, my generation wants it talked about, addressed, and fixed, right? So it's a mistake, and he doesn't listen to that. Um, so I live in a world where I do uh, political concerts. Um, some people have booked me coming up for festivals and things like that just because I am one girl. Um, but... I go into a lot of fundraisers and sing and they will not, nobody will allow me to sing that one song because they're afraid that somebody's sitting in. You're in even the being blacklisted from us. 
from yeah. your own people. That's correct. And, you know, I was offered a TBN show right before the one song happened, uh, a Faith Freedom Family show, which they were all about until it came out and they they pulled that from me. Uh, but I just believe that whatever's taken from me, I'm standing on a foundation of truth that God's just going to give it back and I'm not worried about it. Well, I'm here for you. I'll tell you that right now. I, I really <laughs> appreciate you coming on the show. I like people that, you know, have guts of iron and, and that's what you have. So, um, you know, I, I, where can people find you? Where can they download your music? Where can they get your music? Uh, do you, do you take donations? I mean, what's, how do people give to you? Yeah. So Natasha Owens music is a platform that I'm out on every social media site, just about, um, it, it gives you tour schedule, what, where I'm going to be my merch, how to get my music, uh, anywhere that you, you buy music or download music, you can get it. You can get hard copies through my website from my warehouse. I've got a 5013C that we just put into place called Radiate Ministries. And um, you can give to that uh, and get a tax tax write-off or whatever to, to help the ministry because it's, I mean, it's expensive to be out on the road and we're, we feel kind of lonely. The country market has embraced me a little bit, but not fully, not enough to be on tours yet. Uh, we're supposed to be on president rallies, um, but we were kind of approved for that, but can't quite get on the schedule. So I don't know what's happening. I know God has me on this path for a reason and we're just going to walk it. And um, I've been amazed at what he's done so far. And if this is the end of the road of my, my music career, then so be it. At least I'm, at least I'm telling the truth. It's not the end of the road. Uh, this yeah. is, this is, you're just trailblazing a new direction and it's always like this in the beginning. It's always scary in the beginning. Uh, and it's you're just going to start absorbing more and more people you're going to see. I think God has it all mapped out, and you're going to do just fine. So it's NatashaOwensMusic.com? Correct. Thank you, Natasha, very much for uh, coming on my show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.